listen, I don't wanna put you in a box and I don't wanna be in a box either. I don't know, is it too corny to now reference the fact that I'm in fact in a box? Whether you have an hourglass body type, an actual rectangle body type, or any of the other ones, apple, pear, we can all at times look boxy. Your style should make you feel how you want to feel, and boxy is not one of the words I hear used a lot when referencing a style someone wants to have. So from one person who can feel rectangly to another, let's talk about some of these challenges. So let's talk about an outfit combination that I see a lot of that makes me feel particularly boxy. So here's an example of an outfit that can look boxy really quickly. Now, when I'm wearing something that makes me feel really boxy, I try to break it down into the elements that make it feel boxy. And for this one, I've identified three. First is that it has a crew neck. So anything that's a crew neck is going to give you a straight line from your shoulders across your neck. That's one part of a box. The second is the long sleeves. Long sleeves are gonna make up the other sides of that box. Two sides of a box on either side and then one here at the top. You're really just making it so that there needs to be an end to the box at the bottom and therefore you are boxy. And that's where the third element comes in. It's all one color. If you're wearing this outfit and you don't have a tiny, tiny waist to shoulder hip ratio to give you some kind of figure in this, you're going to feel like a box. So let's change that. There are three ways you can change this outfit. So like I mentioned, we have three elements, the neck, the sleeves, and the all one color. All you need to do to break up this box is to change one of those elements. So let's start with the neckline. You could trade out that crew neck for a V-neck. And so if you had an all one color outfit with sleeves, but a V-neck, you're gonna look less boxy than you had before. Option two, keep the crew neck, keep the all one color, but change out the sleeves, as in have no sleeves. Now by taking out the sleeves, you are in fact making that rectangle smaller. So instead of the two sides of the rectangle on your arms, they're gonna be on your waist. So you could still look boxy. So when you do that, take in the sleeves a little bit more. Don't have your sleeves go straight up and down. Take them in just a little bit, whether that's a high neck, if that's kind of a halter, something where you can show off your shoulders just a little bit more than if it were just straight up and down. All right, speaking of sleeves, sleeves can make you look incredibly boxy if, if your sleeves are the same length as your shirt. I've been guilty of this so many times. Do I always care? No. If you're wearing something tighter, it might not be as big of a deal, but if you're wearing something t-shirty or loose and your torso is here and your sleeve, you're creating a color block down to that same level on your torso, then you are making more of a box, my friend. If you can roll up your sleeves even just a little bit further up on your arm, or make sure to keep those long sleeves all the way down. If you like to have them rolled up like I do, this is really important. But if you don't mind having sleeves all the way down, then this probably isn't a huge deal unless you're wearing a tunic. Usually what I find most challenging when it comes to boxiness is actually the role that your shoulders are playing. Your shoulders are where sleeves come from. I know that's obvious, but hey, if we're pointing out what is the root cause of an issue, we're gonna be talking about shoulders. <laughs> But you can't just look at shoulders by themselves. It is also the neckline. So whenever looking at a body part that you feel like might be giving you trouble or might be trickier to style, or you keep looking at that part of the outfit, look at the parts around it. So it is not just the shoulders. It is like I kind of referenced a second ago, it is the sleeves that come off the shoulders. It is the neckline that comes off the shoulders. Those two things right next to the shoulders might be giving shoulders the brunt of the bad name or giving it a bad reputation. If you have broad shoulders, you probably feel like you look boxy more than maybe other body types do. So sometimes if you're wearing an outfit that you're like, oh, this is just making me look boxy, you're gonna wanna change those two things right next to the shoulders that are creating the box. Sometimes if I'm feeling just fed up with it, we're going V-neck sleeveless get rid of the shoulders, get rid of the arms, get rid of that neckline. We are going thicker straps and a V-neck. 
I personally like thicker straps. Why? Because I would rather be more rectangly than squarey. Very technical terms. Thin spaghetti straps are going to make a square right down here. If this was a spaghetti strap top, regardless of the neckline, this part of my body right here would look like a square. So when you think of your shoulders, I want you to think of your neck and your arms and the thickness of the sleeves. Now, if it's your waist that is making you feel boxy or if you're feeling boxy down here, oh, we've got a whole other plan for that. One way that I experience feeling boxy is because of my wider waist and my shorter torso, meaning I have a rib cage and hip bones that are pretty much right next to each other that doesn't allow me a lot of space to accentuate my waist, show off my waist, even get more of a waist than I have had. So it feels particularly boxy and wide when I have a contrasting line right there. If I'm wearing a dark top and light bottoms, I am creating contrast. And so I have to be really thoughtful about where that line is on my body. Ideally, I want it to be right at my waist or just just below. I don't want my pants to be covering my waist at all, but I still want it to look like it's going in. It's a really hard sweet spot to find, but once you find it, you'll feel like this is where I don't feel boxy and I still have the body that I have. So when I'm creating contrast down here, so like right here, we have contrast. It hits right at my waist here. I'm keeping it from looking too boxy by making sure I have sleeves. If I was doing a sleeveless top, it could look a lot boxier. So by having sleeves, we kind of give it a little bit of a T shape here, a little bit of emphasis and a little bit of curvature that this doesn't do as much. Now, sometimes I might go further up my neck as well to create a really long line so that this feels like it has enough space to not be as square-y and it's more rectangle-y. But just be really cognizant of when you have those high contrast moments. And that doesn't mean that you can't wear high contrast. High contrast is really cute. And with the right outfits, you might feel a certain way in high contrast outfits. You can also really erase a lot of those problems by having all one color outfits. But just like the example from earlier where we were having a crew neck, long sleeve, all one color outfit, that creates too much of a block, right? So you want to balance when you go all one color or when you go high contrast. And that's where finding your style is fun, but it's also a challenge. And that's okay, that's completely normal. Another example I find when trying to accentuate a waist is usually when I'm trying to do any kind of wide leg jean or volume on the bottom. There is something about your legs, which are kind of rectangly in nature, having more fabric on them to make them look more rectangly that can really quickly make your entire body enveloped in a rectangle. And so when that happens, I wanna make sure that there's some kind of something at the waist, whether that is it's a higher rise pant and so it naturally just cinches in at the waist and you're pairing it with a tighter top so that you can see your waist. Maybe you're wearing a belt. If you have a longer torso and you have room for a belt, then have a great belt on there. If you have a shorter torso like me and belts just make it feel even shorter, then maybe don't do a belt. It's up to you or do a cloth belt or some kind of fabric tie belt, something to break up the box, box to give it a little bit of an hourglass. And I'm not saying everyone needs to look like an hourglass. I only say that because if you don't wanna look like a box, we have to change the sides of the box, which means some of those sides go in and some of those sides go out. You get to choose what those sides are, but if you don't want it to look like a box, you gotta take out some of those straight lines or change their directions. Another way to make wider legs look a little bit better is a shorter length. If you have short legs, make sure to go with that higher rise, again, cinching it in at the waist, but making it not look as heavy at the bottom. And I know puddle hems have been really on trend. They can really make an outfit look 
bottom heavy. And so by choosing a shorter hem, you can actually use your shoes to play around with some of the shapes that might be happening. Listen, I believe any body type can wear anything it wants. And when you mix in your own style and preferences along with that, there's gonna be successes and challenges that differ for everyone. But that doesn't mean anything is off limits per se. So if you wanna learn how to wear any pants for your body type or any body type out there, make sure to watch this video next and I'll see you there.